Electron Configuration Shortcuts Useful information to help you in writing electron configurations. 1. Groupings in the filling order. When I write the filling order of the subshells, I tend to write the subshells in groups. The 1S is a group. The 2S and 2P are a group. The 3S and 3P are a group. The 4S, 3D, and 4P. The 5S, 4D, and 5P. The 6S, 4F, 5D, and 6P. And the 7S, 5F, 6D, and 7P are each groups. Each group begins with an S subshell and ends with the P subshell with the same number. Except for the first group, of course, because there is no 1P subshell. Each of these groups corresponds to one of the rows in the periodic table. In particular, each group corresponds to the row number of its S and P subshells. What this means is that, for example, the elements in row 3 of the periodic table will be filling the orbitals in group 3 of the filling order. So, elements in row 1 will be filling the 1S subshell. The elements in row 3 will be filling the 3S and 3P subshells. And the elements in row 6 will be filling the 6S, 4F, 5D, and 6P subshells. Why is this useful? We know which group we will be ending with. So, when we are doing a configuration, we know that all the subshells before that last group will be filled. And we can fill up through the group before and then count the number of electrons we have placed instead of having to keep track of every subshell. For example, platinum is row 6 in the periodic table. There it is. So, since platinum is in row 6, we can fill all the subshells through 5P before we stop to count the electrons, since we know they will all be filled. Number 2. Numbers and the filling order. Since we know that the groupings are connected with the rows in the periodic table, we can associate a particular number of electrons with having filled each particular group. The last column of the periodic table is the noble gases. So the noble gases will be the elements that add the last electron to the group of subshells to fill them up. So the number of electrons that the particular noble gas in a row has is the number we will have when we have filled that group. So at the end of the first row, we have the noble gas helium, which has two electrons. So at the end of the first row, we will have two electrons. At the end of the second row, we have neon, which has 10 electrons. So at the end of the second row, we will have a total of 10 electrons. At the end of the third row, we have 18 electrons. At the end of the fourth row, we have 36 electrons. At the end of the fifth row, we have 54 electrons. And at the end of row six, we have 86 electrons. We have not yet discovered the noble gas at the end of the seventh row, and we have no elements yet in row 8, so we do not need to go further. When we look at the structure of the periodic table, we see a definite pattern. We see a block of two tall columns. Helium is usually included for reasons that will become clear in a bit. There is also a block of six slightly shorter columns and a block of 10 even shorter columns. 
Lutetium and lawrencium are usually included in this group because they are the atoms that would be in the two empty boxes in the table. Finally, there is a block of 14 columns that is two rows high, the two rows that are pulled out of the table to make it fit in onto a nice sheet of paper. If these numbers, 2, 6, 10, and 14, sound familiar, they should. They are the number of electrons that can be put into the different types of subshells. So we can separate the periodic table into blocks, in each of which the elements are filling a particular type of subshell. The two tallest columns we call the S block. For elements in the S block, the last subshell in their configuration is an S subshell. This is why helium is included in this group, because it ends with 1S2. The six column block is the P block. For elements in the P block, the last subshell in their configurations is a P subshell. For elements in the D block, the last subshell in their configurations is a D subshell. And for elements in the F block, the last subshell is an F subshell. Let's do one example to see how these things can be useful. Let's do the configuration for palladium, atomic number 46, symbol PD. From the periodic table, we see that palladium is in the fifth row. So we can fill up through the 4P, which has 36 electrons. Palladium is also in the D block, so we can fill the 5S because we will be ending with a D subshell. So we are left with 8 electrons to place in the 4D subshell. And there is our configuration.